and welcome to Tales from the Closet. This is a vod. Ooh, mom. <laughs> <laughs> this is a vodcast. It's also a podcast. It's also a lifestyle brand. Um, <laughs> if you're watching this right now on Dropout, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for supporting us. It's kind of like a Patreon where you pay five dollars a month and you get this show, and then like. 29 other projects that we're currently working on. Um, today I'm joined by three people that I am huge fans of. Very excited to hop into this show. Uh, let's just start. Uh, who are you? Where are you from? What did you listen to on the way in today? Oh, uh, I'm Gabby Dunn. Uh, she, her pronouns. I identify as a bisexual. I'm from Florida and I listen to Tovlo on the way here. Ooh! Oh, I love it. All right, moving on. Uh, hey, my name's Yasmin Monet Watkins, bisexual in the building. <laughs> this never happens, by the I way. Bees, uh, two bees in the geez. same place. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm from Los Angeles, California. Hey. Love it. What'd you listen to, if anything? Oh, um, y'all remember the um, weekends, like... House of Balloons album. Oh my God, the like uh, hottest thing that's sexy, ever been I made. Sh I should not have gotten that hot and bothered on my drive here, but. I wondered why uh, we all hooked <laughs> up when you first got here. <laughs> Moving on. Hi, uh, I'm Jared Goldstein, uh, he, him. I'm from Long Island, New York. Uh, and this morning I listened to Morning View uh, by Tokyo featuring SZA. Oh, cool. hi. And I, of course, am Allie. Uh, I do go by they, them. I am into uh, women at this point. And uh, <laughs> I don't know what that makes me help. Uh, okay, great. Uh, thank you so much for being on this show. This, of course, is a show about being uh, out of the closet. And looking back and being like, ha ha, or <laughs> boo hoo, or <laughs> you know, like, probably a combo. Yeah, More the latter. Little yeah. Yeah, 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 fully. Yeah. Sometimes it's so sad that it's funny. Um, That's most uh, of it. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> most of life. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I tried to look up today, like where, like what the etymology of like coming out of the closet is, like uh. where that's from. And no one has an answer. Like there oh. was even, I read like a full Time Magazine article that pretty much came up to like, we're not sure. It was, it was like, what did I read? An inside joke with like three people. Yeah, and then yeah. it just like went viral before three viral was a thing. perfect queers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I imagine, in my mind, it's something where you, like it's a gay kind, not a slur, but like, you know, like, oh, you're fashionable, like you're out of the closet, like you're fashionable now. Or oh, whatever. that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. There was, so I don't when know, I, I'm making that up, but it seems right. <laughs> <laughs> I am shooting from the hip currently. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't like it when people use it for other stuff. They're like, I'm a closeted dairy eater. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm totally. like, just don't do that. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, so what kind of like strife did you have at a young age <laughs> yeah. in knowing that you wanted to eat dairy? I think uh, it's frustrating me that straight people don't have to. I'm like, really? Y'all yes. don't, don't gotta come out? Like, yeah, they should. I just, everybody should come out then. I, that's, like, and whenever someone asked me like, when did you know you were gay? Like, that's a pretty common question. I'm like, when did you know you were straight? Right, right. Probably around the same time. Probably yeah. when sexuality hit our veins. <laughs> you know, this morning. Yeah. yeah, but they don't have to have like a bunch of unsatisfying like gay sex before they're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice if they had to do that? Oh, man. <laughs> I, I they were like, oh, uh, me I pretending guess, to be gay yeah. again. Oh, I guess everyone disassociates. <laughs> oh, it's so dark and it's, so real. Yeah, <laughs> and then and then they're like, okay, now I can have my coming out or whatever. Yes, I did anyway. love. The coming out as a phrase is actually from like, there were huge gay balls. There's a huge gay ball oh. scene. And when you came out, now it kind of means like that hard <laughs> conversation you have with someone where you like came out, but came out actually meant when you like showed yourself to the rest of the gay community debutante. and they got to see you for yeah. the first time. It, they stole it from the debutante balls, mm -hmm. yeah. So wouldn't that be nice if we like, yeah, my coming out story that. was, Everyone was shit faced. I looked amazing. <laughs> I was finally seeing everyone that was just like me, you know. All I heard uh, you say was huge gay balls. Yeah. And, you were and then like, I was like, don't say it. Don't say <laughs> anything. Don't say nothing. It came from these huge gay balls. Yes. Uh, and <laughs> that we all came out of. Welcome. 
we are, we're all just on this podcast giggling about balls. <laughs> yeah, balls. right. <laughs> um, yeah, great. So what? Uh, this is kind of the part of the show where we kind of share some of our own tales from the closet. Mm -hmm. um, I remember I, it was so shocking to me in college when I realized that I had been operating under the assumption that everyone was gay. They just figured out how to deal with it. Like I was oh, just like, no. oh, my feelings are like what everyone starts with, but they have like, fi especially Evolved. being very Christian, wow. it was like, oh, they've like figured out how to get past that temptation. Like everyone's gay. Oh, and no. then realizing like, no, 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 <laughs> a lot of people are just genuinely straight, and it's okay. But That's also, so there people are so much more on the spectrum than they say. Like yes. I feel like everyone is like, oh, I'm straight, but it's like, no, you like. Straight point five. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, <laughs> I know two. I know two completely straight women, and I've that's my whole life. I've only known two. Because <laughs> yeah. it's like it'll be like it's, it's some girl will be like I'm straight, but then she's like, oh yeah, I've slept with like three or four women or whatever. Right. But I mm -hmm. so I only know two actual straight women who have never. But I think the more that <laughs> gender in gets fluid, the yeah. less like straight means anything. Yeah. Like, right. I'm just like you're straight. I don't know. It's like wake up. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you just like yell, period. wake up? Wake up! Wake up, wake up, wake up! Uh, yeah, thank you! Uh, System of a Down. Sponsor this podcast. <laughs> System of a Down presents Tales from the Closet. I would watch the shit out of that. <laughs> I would, absolutely. Um, so yeah, what about you guys? What are some uh, moments when you were like, wow, I might be queer? Or Uh... I, I went to a sleepaway camp, and there was one year, you could put, request who you wanted to be put with in your cabin, and there was one year where I, there was a mistake or something, and I got put with the popular girls, like, by accident, <laughs> and then and then they all straightened their hair and, like, put a lot of perfume on and were, like, would sit and, like, do their makeup for a long time in the mirror and stuff, and I was like, oh, no, like, this is a problem, <laughs> yeah. and then I was like, table it table it, <laughs> come back to it later, <laughs> put it away. Yes. Because, uh, like, my nerd friends, we were, I mean, like, it wasn't, it, but they were all just, like, in bras and being like, I'm hooking up with counselors. I'm 13. And I would oh be God. like, mm, oh. cool. I love that for you. Oh, Great. God. Yes. <laughs> but then there was another girl in that cabin who I was, like, really close to, and we became, like, super, super good friends. And then I lost touch with her completely. And then I, uh, she moved, she would, like, 10 15 years later she's in la and we like saw each other and she's also queer yes so i love that yeah and that's happened a few times with like girls that i was super close to when i was younger and then you meet you meet up with them later and they're like oh yeah for sure queer yeah and you're right? like hey me too all of my friends growing up i feel like we found each other yeah kind of middle in school those boyfriend, little moments of like middle school boyfriends gay we were just yeah. like my we did school it boyfriend, i think is gay too yeah <laughs> but like Oh no, I, I shouldn't even, like, he probably won't watch this, but like, <laughs> he's also, a, he's a pastor's son. Oh, and PK. so he's just like never, I don't think, ever gonna. Yeah. But like, I remember my middle school teacher coming up to me and being like, he just hasn't found himself yet. Oh no. <laughs> like, Get like, out of like, here. Like, as his girlfriend. Stay at the out of it. <laughs> God. Wow. <laughs> I wrote so many weird essays that looking back were so gay and I can't believe my my English teacher didn't like take me aside and be like, "Look, yeah. <laughs> so you know." Look. Like you we asked you to write a short story. You wrote a really long short story about another girl looking into a girl's eyes. Um, wow. What's that oh, about? So yeah, Thank you. I started realizing that I was gay probably like around 9 or 10. Um Watching Josh Brolin work out in the Goonies <laughs> no. was like something really activated. <laughs> he's like in a gray like cutoff. He's got like a headband on and he's doing the stretch him workout. Yeah. <laughs> and then he gets t they like tie him up to oh. the thing with the thing. Nope. Because they're like mischievous kids. And then like Josh Brolin, like sweaty and like tied up to a chair with oh workout my gear God. for my like Long Island toxic masculinity, <laughs> like homo brain. I was just like, mm. oh my <laughs> that, God. That. Um, and then I, when I was 11, I was a child actor. I started um, doing theater. So I would like leave the small town of Long Island, go into the big bad city, and I would like be 
rehearsing around all of these like hot dancers yeah. who were like very physical with each other and just like eating power bars. And like that was like really like, uh oh, I'm in trouble. Oh my God. Every <laughs> moment that you have has like one small like athlete. They were chugging Gatorade and there was a, oh God. There was a there was a director of this musical that I was in who would wear every single day he wore a purple it's a, t- a tank top. We used to call yeah. them white feeders. We probably shouldn't call them that anymore. Yeah. I, would, I don't know what else we call them, but that kind of shirt, purple, yes. bright purple, every day the same shirt. And it just like made my head flip over. Oh <laughs> my God. Yeah. I love that head swim feeling. Mm-hmm. Of, I mean, it's terrifying. But yeah. now when I look back on it, I'm like, that's so pure. Yeah, <laughs> right? I was like so attractive. Yeah, I think I felt dizzy 90% yes. of the time. Oh my God. Like, it was very uncomfortable. I'm like, look at my grades. Yeah, maybe all C's, but think of what I was doing. With. Oh my yeah. God, right? Yeah. Totally. It's in an upside down world. Yeah. Like, oh man. I this is something you can't relate to, but every morning in high school, just fully hard. Every <laughs> no morning way. for no reason. For no reason, wake up, and it wasn't until like third period that it would go down. No. Like just no. like every single morning. It was like something I had to do. It was just no. like get out of the car in a certain way. Like walk no. to your class in a oh, certain way. No I'm like not way. even horny. I'm just like, this is insane. No way. Every single morning for hours. I I have heard stories of this, but I just didn't. Yeah. Oh, it's like nuts. No, it's, it's not. So a, it's not a myth. That's, yeah. we're breaking Good the news God. right here. You're just like, and I'm holding a book, and yeah. I'm holding a potted plant. Also, it was like kind of nice though, because it was like Long Island, and it was like cold mostly. So like, oh, it was God. nice to have like a little warm pocket, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Every morning, just be like, I'm oh freezing, God. but oh, no. except for one place. <laughs> wow. Oh. That's a, that's yeah. a tips and tricks for yeah. you yeah. in yeah. a cold environment. Just bundle up. I had a. Just think about Josh Brolin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is clearly what you were doing. Yeah. yeah. I had a diary. I went back and found my old diary and yes. I posted it on Instagram because it's really funny. There's one part, it's the gayest few sentences of all time. It's like, uh, I gave Shauna the shirt that, not her real name, I used fake names in my diary. That's how paranoid I am. I was like, <laughs> oh, I, I, oh, I, man, baby. I, was like, I, gave, I gave Shauna the shirt I got her. She was really happy. She hugged me. She's so pretty. I love seeing her happy. I was in a bad mood, so I skipped basketball, and I didn't tell my parents why. <laughs> that's, that the gayest, the that's, gayest. So that's the gayest uh, short story oh ever God. written of all time. I played basketball, too, in high yeah, school. Yeah, you gotta. Like, Everyone's so hot. Like, yeah. <laughs> All it's, the older kids, it's all the really older girls. Funny. Uh, I did not like. Thi- so I also grew up very religious, bit like apostolic, like speaking in tongues, yes. baptized. Yeah, like yeah. it was Same. interesting. So like I didn't think about sex, or rather, I'd be like, if I am, I'm gonna burn in a lake of fire. So I just like put it off, put it off, put it off, and then. Yeah, I was Did like. Did you? Were you like? Oh no! And if I have sex, like now I'm gonna have sex with women, and now I'm definitely going in the lake of fire. Yeah. So really, what happened? My first girlfriend and I kissed, and then I was like, oh, Wait, what does this mean? Does God hate me? Am I gonna like? And it like launched this like list of questions. Whoa. But it was like really like it was like I went from like zero to like like no sex, no nothing yeah. to yes. like. Woo. Yes, which was That's easy. Free. I was yeah. like able to be super like virginal because I'm like I'm 100% not interested in <laughs> Mikey or Chad. You know, it's like <laughs> what? Uh, but yeah, right? when, how old was that? And when were you like figuring all that out? Um, that was 19. Cool. Sophomore year, we, she was my roommate, one of my best friends. Oh, wow. I know, I know, yeah, yeah. so cliche. She was on the top bunk, I was on the bottom. That's I so thought our funny. house was haunted, so we were like sleeping with each other because we were scared. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Haunted. Oh, there's something spooky. <laughs> no, in but there was. In the air. <laughs> right. Yeah. There, was. there were evil spirits in that room. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <Jen. laughs> But I feel like all the signs were there. Like I wrestled in high school. Like it's yeah. like yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Come on. Wrestling is like how uh, <laughs> women tell each other that they're interested in each other. <laughs> now to this day, <laughs> to this you day. meet you meet someone and I you meet just someone, put them I in a headlock. Down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah. I nice head and arm throw. And then I say, "Are you single?" <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Kids at home. That's how you do it. Just so you know. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh yeah. Um, yeah, that must have been crazy growing up so religious. Oh God. Yeah. No. And it's um, it's crazy because I. I I do poetry as well, and um, I performed at the Black Lesbians United Retreat one year. Cool. This poem about like coming out and like dealing, like trying to wrap my head around some of the contradictions in, say, Leviticus, where they're like, you can't eat pork, but also you can't fuck like the same sex, and you're like, wait a minute, everyone's eating ribs. Why? Like so anyway. um, I did that poem, and this girl was like, oh my god, like I went to a similar church, like it was really like hurtful and just like tough for me and I'm like I'm there with you and it turns out that we were both at the same church at the same Ah, time you're lying no like she like we both were like what you were at peace apostolic too and I was like I was at peace apostolic and we were both like ah oh and don't you wish you had like a beacon sometimes like I wish you like only we could see it and there was like a sign yeah Yeah. a girl I uh not I she likes to say that I was her babysitter but I like just would watch her some drive her home from school or whatever but we're we are like friends now (laughs) and equals but she constantly is just like, we met because Gabby was my babysitter. And I'm like, stop, whatever kinky <laughs> thing you're doing with this, cut it out. But so she, uh, we're equals now. But uh, wow. she. I just want to unpack it's everything a lot. you I just did. But anyway, but she's, yeah. uh, she, nothing has happened. She's gay as well. And we were like, oh my God, I wish that like when, when I had been your babysitter or whatever, we had like, <laughs> you know, had like a beacon where we could like see each other. Yes. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Well, that's the thing is like, Everyone is like in the closet, quote unquote, and it's so isolated. Yeah, and we're all our closets are right next to each other. You know, I know. Like, there's just one wall. Like that you could we've knock on up. it and be like, "Are you there?" Yeah. Yeah. But didn't you also <laughs> feel like the most afraid of those people? Yes, because I thought happened. they would. I thought they would uh, expose me. Yeah, if I was friends with them, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I, it's it, like I, I had the same thing where I thought I was kind of like self-hating mm-hmm. and like yeah. avoided those people, and then I'd made the switch to be like super ally was like oh gosh you know what we need to stick up for them you know what i'm gonna hang out with them (laughs) growing up all of my bullies were gay kids (gasps) yeah Yeah, i had like three or four bullies exclusively gay no at the time or now um two at the time (laughs) three at two at the time one now that was that's what really that's what really like pulled it together for me i was uh, i forget how but i was on Kim's Facebook, and I was like, oh, she's married uh, to a woman. Right. Like, that's, that like, makes oh, all of them. Oh, makes sense. Makes so sense. it was God. all of them, yeah. It's scared. like that expression, dogs bark at dogs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> wow. But hey, Audrey Ward has, and I, I like love Audrey, and I know it's not necessarily funny, but she says, uh, like, I often think of Angelina Weld Grimke dying alone in an apartment in New York City. And I think of myself in isolation at Hunter College, and I think of what it could have meant in terms of sisterhood and solidarity mm-hmm. if she had known I needed her words and had I had them. Totally. Mm-hmm. And it's like that. It's so beautiful. Yeah. That connection that happens when we talk to each other. Gabby, like, we had a conversation, I wanna say, like, two years ago or whenever at Birds. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, but, like. Yeah, no, I remember hanging out. What was the conversation? Like, just like. The convo about like navigating, like being by and like in, cause like I'm, I got, I'm married now, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And like, I just felt so much encouragement from that conversation. Oh, and, thank like, you. But it's real, like those, mo- no, I mean it. No, the the yeah, moments totally. that we have when we talk to each other about like, this is what my life experience mm-hmm. is. This is what I'm going through. You realize yes. one, you're not alone, but mm-hmm. that also like, you can learn from how other people live their lives or things that they're yeah. doing that you didn't know was even possible you're like oh that's a thing yeah. oh it's oh, great especially like, to as a bisexual to talk to other bisexuals because you feel yeah. a little like uh, like sometimes you're just like i don't it, okay but i'm in this world but i'm in this world like what's going on and you feel a little like i don't know fuzzy and yeah. then yeah. You know, talk to another bisexual and you're like thank god you're here <laughs> right like oh, oh i'm god. not alone i'm not alone mm-hmm. yeah that that's so crazy i have a uh, my uncle who i grew up with was the only gay person in our family mm-hmm. and uh and it was so like quiet and hush hush and like he would bring his roommates to christmas ah. and it was like wow. yeah and uh he so we never got to talk like my right. brother and i are both gay and he was also hmm. gay he ended up killing himself Ugh. yeah and and this was only oh. like a couple years ago but i'm like I was living in LA. He was also living in LA. Yeah. And I think like we're so close, yeah. but like 
something keeps us from talking to each yeah, other. Yeah, it's crazy and that like the, the family stuff, how how autopilot you can go with yes, your families. Yes, mm-hmm. totally. And I think like there's an older generation of queer people who haven't healed. Yeah. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? I can only imagine watching two young gay people grow up in the family and be more out mm-hmm. and not reaching out to them or you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. sometimes I go, oh my God. I like when I like my young, my younger fans who are just like on Instagram being like out with their pronouns, yes. whatever. And I'm like, oh, this is post glee America. Like, <laughs> you don't even know what it was like pre glee. Yeah. Get out of here with that. Yes, totally. <laughs> And it's like, yeah, uh, there are still things that you can work on even as like an out mm-hmm. person. There are still ways that we find to like isolate ourselves. Like, yeah. Kind of feel like. I, have, I have one out gay um, family member who is like, I think he's my, my dad's cousin. And he was literally described to me as a black sheep. We like didn't know him. He like never Ugh. came around. He, he owned like a, a chocolate store uh, in the city. And once I, once I was living there, I I went to work there for like a week. What? And it was, yeah, it was kind of bizarre because it was just like, I needed a job and he was like, you should come work here. And I think a part of me, I, I, I wasn't out yet. And there was a part of me that was just kind of like curious and like went there to kind of like suss out this thing that like I didn't even realize I was doing fully at yeah. the time. Mm-hmm. And then um, I didn't take the job because it was, like eight dollars an hour, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I you know I I seen when so I so he to lowballed you. <laughs> he did. <laughs> Sounds he like, like a black sheep to me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was they never they didn't like him not because of the gay stuff they were just like that guy's cheap as hell. Yeah. <laughs> was he queer? Was he like a yeah. gay man? Yeah. Gay man. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. That's that's so crazy. There's so many people that fall through the cracks in families. Mm-hmm. I feel like we could all find someone that's yeah. in our family that we're like, oh yeah, no one talks to them. Yeah. And the ways what that you can just there? even as an adult just still operate with your child mind mm-hmm. and like not even ask questions. Mm-hmm. You know. Totally. Like where when you're out in the world, you can be so sharp and aware and clocking gay people left and right but like when it comes to your own family you're just like what my parents told me when I was a kid yeah. is real yeah. and that's all I know we do things Why this I, way yeah. and it's like you can rock the vote at any time yeah. you are like a full individual but and you it just takes an email like right yeah I feel like I became empowered though when I was like okay I haven't been smoted yet. <laughs> I don't know, like, <laughs> whatever No it is. one has smited me. Uh, I yeah. was like, I'm, like, I feel like God, like, would be, like, cool with love. Like, yeah, of course. Right, and then, like, I, like, I remember going to, like, gaychurch.org and being like, okay, I'm not gonna, like, I'm not crazy. Whoa. But, like, I what know, is it that? Was, so cute. This website that existed at the time. <laughs> It's I don't a bar. Know. <laughs> it's a bar at yeah, Gay Church. We go it's on the Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. The mimosas are great. Um, yeah. But like I like getting rid of like all of the like shame or whatever it was that I was feeling around any sexuality. Like I was just like, oh, here's the world, and I can do what I want, and I can follow like my instincts and my intuition, and like mm-hmm. with every like every facet of my life, I was like, oh, like I went into college thinking I was going to be a veterinarian. Right, oh, and yeah. then I like took black feminist thought around the same time that I was coming out, and I was like, oh, I'm uh, okay. Like, this. yeah, this, totally. This, this is this is what I want. Yeah, do. what a helpful like, class to take. Oh yeah, we yeah. were reading The Color Purple by Alice Walker. Oh my God. But you could have That's also been the most radical veterinarian of all time. <laughs> yeah, true. Honestly, think about true. that. Like black-owned <laughs> feminist veterinarians office. Yes. Yeah. I you not call there. this dog a bitch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would go there for yeah. sure. Well, get out. Um, okay, great. Well, we are going to move on to our segment. Each uh, episode, we have a haunted word. You know, oh. a scary, creepy, crawly little word uh, <laughs> uh, for us just to discuss. Uh, today, it is beard. <laughs> uh, beard. What does it make you think of? Ooh. Every time someone says beard. No. Oh, <laughs> beard. Okay. <laughs> I know what it makes me think of. Yeah. Um, my parents asked me uh, to bring a beard to my dad's. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Shut it down. <laughs> Absolutely not. 50th birthday beard. 
To your what? <laughs> <laughs> my dad's 50th birthday. To no bring a girlfriend? Way. Yeah. No. And she is my best friend. And my, my mom asked me, would you bring her... Um, just so that we can make it seem that way. No, yeah. when was that? I was already, I mean, of course I was out there. They're, they're asking me to do this. Um, that was, I mean, I was probably like maybe 20, 19, 20 oh years my old. Oh I had uh, just newly come out. Maybe been out for like a year. And my parents, you know, we, had, we did the big fight. We did like the big silence. We did the moving on, but like nothing was readdressed in a real way. Oof. Um, so yeah, that's what that's what they wanted, um, and Damn. it really it really bummed me out. Um, but I was gonna bring my friend anyway, and I brought her along with me. But I I, I hope I, I haven't asked them since. I hope they didn't tell anyone that she was my girlfriend at the time. Also, like it was so just. We got there and there were like three gay waiters, <laughs> and the whole time me and the gay waiters were just like. Oh, yeah. Um, and yeah. then it was actually like it was actually kind of beautiful because by the end of it, I was like really upset. Um, I left, uh, and then I had just like called her because it was like I, th I couldn't really talk to them about it. I certainly couldn't talk to them about it like at the party. So afterwards, I left and I was just like on this really long walk, and I called my mom and I was like, "Hey, like I." I can't do that. I can't do yeah. this. And um, and it, it it took that for her to realize like, okay, I'm fucking up and I have to stop. Yes. And I have to let it all go. And she really, really, truly did like from that phone call. Um, so yeah, so it was like being like made to like have a beard for one day for my dad's birthday. Oh, uh, let's yeah. not. Let's not. <laughs> <laughs> How <funny>. dare you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, it was just great. It like it was like it was the breakthrough that I needed with my parents. Mm. That is so great. Yeah, I the word or the like the idea of beard is so shocking to me because I do feel like it's kind of like straight people's straight people are so obsessed with the concept of a beard because I think it involves them. <laughs> it's like it's just like how could I be tricked by a gay person? It's like Ugh. I don't think I ever had a beard. I think I sincerely tried. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah. to chalk up relationships that I had with men as like I was just had a beard and I like manipulated them or something like that. I'm like, "Oh, you're leaving out so much care there." Yeah. And like, yeah. And self finding, and no one knows exactly who they are. So don't, you know. And the whole yeah. time of being in the closet, it's not just like you're not only stopping yourself, you're also starting what you think you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. yeah. And it's like this twofold thing, and you lose on both ends, and you're, you're only doing what you think you're supposed to do. And. You or, hope that people are compassionate about it in the end, but sometimes they aren't. And or people sincerely don't know. Like, yes. Like friends of mine who've come out way later in life, they really just, I mean, I don't understand that because I knew when I was younger, but they just did not know. Totally. Oh, absolutely. There's so many factors that can go into not knowing your sexuality mm -hmm. at like a young age or, yeah. you know, yeah. So they weren't I, trying to fool anyone. They yeah. just didn't know. It's interesting though, like being kind of or in the fluid space in between of like no like having had friends who have like gotten with someone of the opposite sex as a way to like hide their sexuality but like also being by like both people that I've dated like I feel like people have been like oh is that a beard for Yasmin and mm. I'm like I like both yeah. beards and mustaches I don't know like, <laughs> <laughs> like there's no cover there's no hiding like I've always like from the moment not from the moment but like I was like okay I'm bi and yeah. that's all right and like once I embrace that like I was able like I don't have fear in the world no matter who I'm with but mm -hmm. I've been at pride before and like had someone be like hey straight couple like what are you doing here yeah I hate that and it's like I'm I'm very much still a part of like the family and the rainbow and like, yeah, totally but I that. also don't hide that part about myself in anything. Like I'm like unapologetic about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Um. But like, so I I can't necessarily personally relate to the idea of a beard because yeah. it's like I do both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. But I do have mustache envy. I what I would not do with like a twirly mustache. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. If oh a beard god. is someone you're using to look straight, what is a mustache? <laughs> <laughs> like a really like a really skinny person. <laughs> <laughs> he 
needs to bulk if he wants to be a beard. Yeah. Uh, this is just my mustache. Uh. <laughs> oh, we're working on it. He's at the gym all the time. <laughs> yeah. That is really interesting, though, the idea of, like, optics as, like, appearing straight or something yeah. like that. I think that all the time. I've definitely considered, like, I don't know where I am on the gender scale, but mm -hmm. depending on where I go, mm -hmm. it's like, will I end up a straight person? <laughs> will I end up a straight right? white man? Interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh -huh. Now is the Let's time go. for yeah, more straight white men. Yeah, definitely do that, Allie. Yeah. Definitely become a straight white man. I'm just like, that's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah knowing like what people, will I end up with a partner who only saw themselves with men? Will that hurt? You know what I mean? Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, unsure of like what that feels like. But uh, yeah, I think that's so interesting to be at Pride. Pride is a mess already. I mean, it of, is like a who's mess. looking We're, at who, who's shit Let's talk based. about it. <laughs> <laughs> we need a new Pride that is like, a sweet like town hall meeting yeah. <laughs> of just all the gay people in that city uh queer only town hall the comment section on that one. Oh yeah they're yeah. ready uh great okay we are now going to go into my favorite part of the show oh user submitted questions yes. uh if you're watching at home uh thank you so much for submitting questions we really appreciate all your like thoughtful effort in submitting questions uh if you haven't submitted yet we always put up an anonymous uh survey that you can answer so if you're maybe in the closet or you know you just don't want to attach your name to something feel free to ask a question uh all right here we are. Uh, official, official. We have some gorgeous questions. Uh, this one comes from someone named Brad. Oh, hi, Brad. Hi, Brad. Uh, I recently came out to my mom. Congrats. British. British. Congrats, British. <laughs> Brad is British. Uh, I recently came out to my mom, but I was drunk at the time. I'm glad I did it, but I have this gross feeling that I failed myself. Is there a wrong way to come out? Oh, uh, no, I don't think you failed yourself. I think uh, do it again sober. Totally. But, uh, but also, that's a hilarious story that I'm sure you'll <laughs> yeah. love telling. Yeah. Like, when you're older, you'll be like, that was very funny. Yes. It might not yeah. seem funny now, but it's, trust me, it's funny. Yes. Uh, the, I don't know. There's a, I don't know if there's a wrong way to come out. I always wish... I, I like was started doing stuff on the internet and started like acting and doing all this entertainment stuff and I was already out like I just was already I would talk about it freely and now I'm like God I could have monetized that <laughs> I could have made what do you mean? Well, no, I could have so made, real though I could have made a coming out YouTube video that would have gotten like six million views are you kidding me <laughs> I could have like saved it for like an exclusive at like at like a magazine <laughs> these are, Brad take. Take notes. Why didn't I make any money? Why, I didn't make any money off my coming out. I'm so weak. I'm broke and gay. And, and I should have. I should have had a tearful video that was 18 minutes long and would have made me so much money. That is interesting. Do you guys watch any YouTube videos? Like, I. That's how yeah. when I was first like, I am definitely trans because that's all I would watch. <laughs> was like when I had the privacy of my own YouTube moment. Oh yeah. You know? Was it videos of trans people? Of coming trans people. Yeah, trans people being like, I started tea and this is what it looks like, right. or I started estrogen. This is you know, and like mm -hmm. day in the life, and I was just like, I just think it's interesting. <laughs> but like that's yeah. what fourteen does. hours later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. You're like, I'm not alone, and yeah. like, what brand is that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I just watch exclusively like gay YouTubers. And it's also great, or gay and trans YouTubers. And it's also great because I think when I was growing up, there was no, you weren't able to see any queer people. And now you can just hop on YouTube and see yes. a million of them. And then someone's Thank like, God. why is every YouTuber gay? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. You like, you just are feeling lonely and you want to make <laughs> videos in your room and try to like reach other people. Seems pretty gay. Yeah. yeah. Also, how come nothing else is gay? Like who has a chokehold on what media <laughs> get, makes it to like right. the big screen? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I remember the first coming out video on YouTube that I watched it was wild because like I, I guess it just, it like, YouTube wasn't like that pervasive at the time that I was coming out. So when I f saw the first one, it was like I at that point had already been out and it blew my mind because they like they they like stopped and they and he's on the phone with his dad and then he like chickens out for a sec and he hangs up and I'm like, "Oh my god, like I cannot believe I'm allowed to like being yeah. invited to mm -hmm. watch this." Like I couldn't imagine like coming out was like the scariest thing I thought like would ever 
happen and it kind of was actually yeah so that's to, why like, you should get paid it? to do it <laughs> <laughs> you should all be paid to do it gabby's now our accountant yeah brad <laughs> get <laughs> paid to come yeah. out somehow how how was coming out for you what was yeah it was let's a go disaster. around and say that yeah it was so bad no oh way my God. tell me everything. it was a full fight well i tried to come out to my parents when i was like 12 and this was like around the time i was like seeing all these hot dancers mm -hmm. tied um, up with and i <laughs> <laughs> Right, and I came home, uh, and I, I told my mom I I had, was at rehearsal that day, and I had I had seen two two men kissing by uh, a vending machine, and I was like just destroyed over it, and I oh and I told God. her about it, and I and I tried to start this conversation, and then it was just very quickly was like oh don't worry no oh no 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 no, and I was like well okay, Whoa. Um, and then it wasn't yeah. until like probably like six or seven years later when my mom found porn on my computer. No, uh, the worst. Wow. But like, also like your fault, mom. Like I tried to tell you when I was 12. It was, yeah. could have been so cute. Yes, uh, yes. You thought like two guys kissing at a vending machine was bad? <laughs> Like, yeah. get ready for Ethan. Check out my and, hard drive. Yeah. Like, Jesus. That's um, why you're waking up every morning. That sucks. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, my God. And then, God. yeah, and then it was just like, and then, and then I was like, but don't tell dad, which is like oh, so, yeah. like, understandable, but also, like, insane. Like, we're just not going to tell her husband that their <laughs> baby that they made is there's this really case, big, though. important thing. There were, like, three people that I was like, I'll never tell them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and only one person is on that list still. Because, really? Well, so it was like, I'm never going to tell my dad. I'm never going to tell my wrestling coach. And I'm never going to tell my dad's like. I feel like you wouldn't have to tell your wrestling yeah, coach. Right? That's no, like wrestling pretty coach gay. Yeah, right? Yeah. Who's, who's left on the list? <laughs> never going to tell my girlfriend. My dad's <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, she's like, still, like, she's like, I mean, but also they divorced. So like, that really one took care of itself, ago, right? <laughs> <laughs> wow. The, yeah. yeah, that's so. I'm not as close with my dad, so it was never really an issue. I was just like, oh, I'm coming out to my mom, done. But then for me, it was my youth pastor. It was like mm. a full on father figure and oh. was like wildly like evangelical, like by the yeah. book yeah. religious. And I had to come out to him on at a summer camp that Yikes. I was a counselor for. Last day or first? So thank you. Oh, God. You know, you know what's going on. It was honestly the hardest thing ever because with my mom, she called me and was like, I think your brother might be gay. And I said, I think I might be too. And she was <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. what a what great, like. It was amazing, it was amazing. It was amazing. She, was so, she was fine, it was great. So then this like youth pastor, I go to be, I was doing stand up at this, <laughs> at this church camp. I was like the entertainment. And then I also got to be a counselor. I was an amazing counselor. Were you wearing we threw, a bolo tie? I, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> I feel so seen in a, so in a gross act. way. Of course I was. Um, so I'm there. It's like midway through the week. I'm like, this is like in Michigan. I'm like, I need to come out to this guy. It's really important to me that I like have closure and come out to these people. And uh, it was, really like torn up about it because i was like this could go so bad like i don't know if i can face like a rejection far away from home you know yeah. and then just have to go home so part way through the week this woman was like are you okay like this really <laughs> nice mom that was working there too and i was like no and just like <laughs> of course like burst into <laughs> tears and i was like no i'm carrying a lot of stuff right now told everything to her she was so sweet and she was like okay don't tell him now because the church has a terrible like pedophilia homosexuality like he was she was like he might take you out of like your counselor position because you're oh. like in a bunk with teen girls not realizing like i'm gay i'm not into 15 year old women yeah, right. you know it's a different thing um yeah and so she was like come out at the end of camp <laughs> she was like wait until the very last day tell him on the way to the airport like, I and i was like pregnant it's too I late love you. this yeah. is like this older <laughs> woman yeah oh it was the best advice ever i was yeah. like oh my I'm god like, i can't imagine you. being wow, stuck at great. a camp and just being like i know you don't fuck with me yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that's the thing i'm like you have no reason not to like me and yeah. i but i just know that you won't now it's yeah like, i ghosted oh. hurston says like why would you deny yourself the pleasure of my company yeah yes. i love that shit I so love much that. like why would you like but that's on you fully like, you're I, like, just ghosted all those people yeah. i like full ghosted i grew up religious as well i full ghosted everyone 
and then just like became internet famous and then they found out that way. <laughs> <laughs> just a wow. full ghost and then if they look at my Instagram. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, kind of the same thing. Like yeah. not in, not Instagram famous, but I didn't, I, I came out to my extended family like through the grapevine. Right. Mm. And I didn't ever say one gay thing to them until they came and saw me do stand up. Yes, and it was exactly. like ten minutes of like, so I'm gay. Yes. Oh my and god. And my parents I did I did jokes about being bisexual in my stand up and my parents like were they thought I was joking. And then which, what? <laughs> why would good I do one, that? Gabby. And then like it, when I was right and then when I was in college, I was like at a, a bris with my dad and he w- I w- he's like, what's r- what's wrong with you? You're in a bad mood. And I was like, oh, I'm just having trouble with this girl. And he was like, what? And then we went into another room and I like came out to him again. And he was like, oh. And it was <laughs> it like years later. Bit. He's like, I thought it was a bit. <laughs> Truly, he thought it was a bit. Oh and I was like, God. why would that be a bit? And he's like, I'm listening now. I'm so sorry. I just, I'm listening now. And then my mom, I've been out for 10 years. And I, my mom came to visit and me and her, my younger sister is very straight. And we were hanging out and she was like, your younger sister has such beautiful nails. Why are your nails so short, Gabrielle? <laughs> and I was like, oh. And my sister was like, I need to leave. I need to leave. And I was like, you're staying for this. <laughs> and I was like, mom, I, I'm, I have sex with women. And she was like, oh. And then I was like, I've been out to you for 10 years. What did you think I did with my girlfriends? And she was like, just like hang out and talk, I guess. It never occurred to me that you would oh be having God. sex with them. And I was like, that's what that's what gay is and she i know that conceptually but i didn't know it like actually and my sister was like can i leave now (laughs) no (laughs) no you're staying here my mom was like oh so like they can get it it's like coming out is like in phases where like my parents like got it in Uh different ways at different times over the past like course of 10 years i hope my parents never get it (laughs) i'm like you can know who i'm I'm in love with tv show and i'm on it yeah no i'm not sorry that is like dead that's all you need to know my sister was like, when you came out, it was the best thing because it meant that I could do anything. Yeah. Oh, away my with God. It. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, my dad was, like, super homophobic when I came out. And then, like, I, like, you know, was dating men and women. And, like, he, I think, got used to it and was like, all right, fine. And then I met my husband. And he was like, yes. Oh, <laughs> my like, God. He's yeah. like, but he sent me a, me- like, I sent him a video of, like, um, these fathers who went to Pride with their gay mm-hmm. children. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, if only. Like, I just, like, sent it to him. And he's like, Yazzie, are you trying to tell me something? <laughs> and I was like, I'm, no, I'm not doing this trauma again. Yeah. Yes, Dad, oh I'm bi. God. You know this. You know this. Oh, mm. my God. But he's like, are you trying to tell me something? I was like, nigga, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're done here. We're done. So he would probably never go to Pride with you. you no. Think? It's real messed up. I feel like my mom would, oh, my but parents she would, would be, be nervous. My parents would be so into it. It would, I actually don't want them. Like, they would be <laughs> fully, like, paint their faces. Like, it would be too much. Oh, my God. My parents are very, like, like very, very leftist. To the point that, like, I think they really love me being queer because they can go on Facebook and argue with people and go, well, my gay daughter. Like, that, yeah. like they love it. Like, they had, like, a my gay LGBTQ daughter. for Hillary on their front lawn. My oh mom, my the background of my mom's phone is a rainbow. I said, why? She's like, for you. I said, I don't live here. Yeah. Yeah. Like she's- My mom has a rainbow flag in her basement. Yeah. It's yeah. like so many levels of like, why? why yeah, she's okay. like, I will be as loud as you need me to be. Yes. De- underground. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She lives on Staten Island, so, you know, it's, oh, yeah. it's tough. Is she doesn't want to get like hate crimes. <laughs> yeah, like, right. Literally I don't know. not a joke anymore. Um, okay, final question. Uh, how do you all feel about the difficulties of creating queer characters when writing or mm. acting? It seems that when you have a character and they are on some level of queer, you get people asking why a character has to be gay. Or if it's an old character and there's no indication that that person is queer until after the fact, people get mad about that character being like reconned, uh, like with Dumbledore, when people sure. are saying like, oh, Dumbledore was gay. Yeah. Well, um, I'm a terrible writer, so I have bigger problems than that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Every uh, character should be gay. Yes. Every character is gay until proven straight, yes. and even then they're bisexual. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Every one single character time. is queer. You know what, when it's like <sighs> one queer person in a show and all the other friends are straight, mm-hmm. and I'm yes. like, who are that person's real friends? Right? They go home and uh, have different yes. friends, <laughs> because there's no way every person in my <laughs> life is queer, 
I only have queer friends. Like there is no way yeah. that that person hangs out with only like you find each other. You at least want to find community. Totally. There is like every if every single character in something I write is queer, that's yes. actually more realistic than if there's just one queer person. Yes. Totally. Because that would be their actual friends. It would be nice, though, if the default was, we don't know. Let's find out what that person's yeah. sexuality I is. I think but every it's character all default is, straight. Every character is bisexual. Every character on every show is bisexual. You can fucking quote me. Yes. Yeah. And I, I tweeted one time, I was like, if Reba, I... Reba, McIntyre, All bye. of them. Bye, 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 bye. bye. <laughs> I, I tweeted, I was like, just as if I ever write something, which I write all the time, but I was like, anything I write and every character I ever play as an actress, please assume they are bisexual. Yes. I don't care if my character is like um, like the main girl in a rom-com and my whole storyline is a dude. I am bisexual. Yeah. <laughs> that is my gift to you, every person who's a fan of me. Yeah. Forget it. I, I'm writing, I wrote a comic book that comes out in October and every character is queer and I don't care. Yeah. Like yeah. every single one. But fight me. Totally. <laughs> Yeah, I wrote a pilot where everyone was gay, and the biggest note was like, everyone's gay? And it everyone. was like, yes. okay, yes, everyone. when you're gay, you have to pick a lot of gay friends. And everyone. Like, hey, all there queers. was, I wrote like a YA novel that came out a couple years ago, and, and uh, I went to Emerson College, which, by the way, the unofficial slogan is gay by May or your money back. And everyone wow. was like, <laughs> and the take, it, my half of the book, I wrote it with another girl, and my half took place at Emerson College, and they were like, Every person at this college is gay. And I was like, it would be unrealistic to my experience if there was a straight person in my side of the story. <laughs> I'm sorry. So you want to talk about how it's unrealistic that every character is gay? Is gay? Like every character or any character being straight at Emerson would be unbelievable yeah. to anyone who knows Emerson. But how do you guys craft like a queer character with care? How would you go about that? They're just a person. Yeah. And then they have this like, I like kind of late not late coming out, but like in the comic book, like the girl is bisexual the, the whole time. And then there's, she's got this male love interest who's very macho. I'm spoiling the thing. But anyway, basically like <laughs> he comes out later in the book. And I just like to be like, yeah, like you already know him and you had thoughts and, and uh, assumptions about him and suck it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I, I do love that notion of like including queer narratives in everything. And I think the care comes from like, Really wanting to see the characters that I wanted. Toni mm -hmm. Morrison says, like, I write the characters that I wanted to read. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm like, these are the stories I want to see. I want to yes. see the, like, brown girl fall in love and, like, ha not have that love be, like, tarnished or, like, have them die or mm -hmm. some, like, horror Thank movie. You. Like, yes. I just want to see it work out. Like, yeah. and it's, like, I think it's infused with, like, women I've dated, women I know, with myself. Like, I put, like, Often a lot of my own narratives show up in like my creative. Totally, and, yeah. Like, yeah. I think that care comes from that, but also knowing that like the next generation is going to like come to this and this will be their salvation potentially. Yes. Yeah. And like I have to be honest with this character. Yeah. I have to like give it love and care and like make sure that it's a story that I want. I wouldn't story that even, I, need. I wouldn't even know how to write a straight character. I would just like my friend and I wrote were writing straight characters in a sketch and literally the the straight man just had a line where he was like we do that every Sunday at the bar watching football. And she and I were like, good job. We did a good job. That's, that's definitely what a straight yeah. person Let's would go. say. Yeah. 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 We, were like, we were like, good work. We write really believable male characters. Yeah. <laughs> Last year, I read a book uh, called A Little Life by <gasps> Anya Yanagihara. Y'all, if you did, like stop watching this right now, that's awful to say, but like A Little Life <laughs> it's, is it's, so yes. good. It's the best book I've ever read. I, really? I oh would my say. God. I mean, it's I don't read a lot. There. But. Love this. <laughs> no, but it's, it's so more great. Harry Potter's in this. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. a great uh, representation uh, of um, so nuanced queer men, um, and it is a mix of like of of it's a mix of of every identity, uh, and that's what's so great about the story. Um, just go read that. And oh my god, I know am a actually bit going more to. About it's the most book powerful right book. Oh my god. Oh. Okay, great. Well, yeah. that, let's do. Uh, well, before we go, let's do. Uh, where can anyone find you? Where can they? What do you want them to see of yours? Sure. Uh, I am on Twitter and Instagram at Hey Jared Hey, uh, and you can uh, watch me on uh, Deku, uh, which is a gay streaming app. Um, in Out on Stage, which is an all queer stand up series. Oh, cool. Hosted by Zach Noe Towers. Okay. Oh my God, love it. Yeah. Cool. 
Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook. Actually, I'm, let me not even lie. I don't post to Facebook. So Yasmin yeah. Monet Watkins, Y-A-Z-M-I-N, Monet Watkins. Um, I improv with my team, Obama's Other Daughters. We have a monthly show at UCB called Black Girl Magic every first Wednesday of the month. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Um, and I do spoken word too, so find me on the internets. Love it, Gabby. Uh, I'm at, on Instagram at Gabby Road, which is a stupid Beatles pun, uh, and because I didn't believe Instagram was going to take off, so don't <laughs> listen to anything I say. Uh, and uh, I'm on Twitter at Gabby Dunn, G A B Y D U N N, and then I have a YouTube show called Just Between Us. And I have a, a book that came out uh, like a month ago called Bad With Money. And it's based on my podcast, Bad With Money. And it's a finance show and finance book. But it's it's funny and queer and oh. social justice-y. Uh, and I, you can watch me go from someone asking what is a stock is, what is a stock to a full-blown socialist by season three. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. So All it's right, a journey. Great. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye. Hi, it's me, Allie. Did you like that sketch? Ah, well, you should think about joining Dropout. You can look us up on the Discord server and we can chat all the time. It's kind of like we're neighbors. <laughs> Who's Mr. Rogers? I've never heard of him. Weird.